second podcast of Unit 10, and at the top of page 6. And the nice thing is we're not really doing anything new at all. We're just going to really do an application a little bit after some stoichiometry. So percent yield, we're going to look at the relationship of how I should have done or what how much I actually made in the lab to how much I should have made. So quick reminder, you already looked at this once and we've been talking about it. But remember, everything you've been calculating has been a theoretical yield. In theory, how much could have made. So that's a calculated value. So theoretical yield is always a calculated value. The new yield, new, excuse me, vocab is an actual yield. That is how much did you actually make? Weird how that goes. How much was made in the lab? How much did you produce? And then you have to do a comparison. So theoretical, what it should have been. Actual, what you have been. Okay, so your percent yield formula is just your actual over theoretical. This is on your chart, but if you think about it, this is how you guys have been calculating your grades on your test all year long. How much you earned over how much you should have made in theory, and divide it times it by 100, your grade has actually been your yield. And I think you all know the higher the yield, the better you feel on your grades. And in a lab, you want to have a high percent yield so you're not wasting your products. So this is what the problems will look like. If you notice, you're just going to get an extra piece of information. So 21 grams of aluminum sulfide are decomposed, and the actual yield of sulfur is 110. So right here, this is extra information, the actual, actual yield. Extra information we'll need, but I do not need it until after stoichiometry. So we're first going to have to do a whole stoichiometry problem because I can't figure out percent yield until I know how much I should have made in theory. So we're going to do our same steps then what do I want in this? Well, if I give you an actual yield of sulfur, you're going to have to calculate the theoretical yield of sulfur. And, it, and typically, they're given in grams. So I want grams of sulfur. What was given to me? The 2,100 grams of my aluminum sulfide. And again, I'm not worrying about this number right now. I will use that after I do my stoichiometry. So this steps are for my stoichiometry. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to make sure I balance my equation. And then we're going to start setting up our tracks. 2,100 grams. And again, we could put through our steps. If you're getting to after all doing yesterday, we can start doing our tracks. So aluminum sulfide. Okay, grams don't do anything to me. What do I need to know? The molar mass. Because I have to get to moles to do my stoichiometry. So I know the molar mass, 150.16 grams from the periodic table, two aluminums, three sulfurs. Okay, then I get to moles, but I need to get to sulfurs where we use our mole ratio. So from my balance equation, three moles of sulfur for every one mole of aluminum sulfide. Nothing new. This is all what we've been doing. Well, moles, we need to get to grams. Molar mass of sulfur, 32.066.07. We can take out the calculator, 2100 divided by 150.16 times 3 times 32.07. So, you end up 1,346 grams of sulfur. Okay, remember, this is your theoretical. In theory, if all 2,100 grams of aluminum sulfide react, I should make 1,346. So let's look at how we did. Well, percent yield. Okay, what did I really make? Okay, now come back up. This again is your actual. It even tells you. So I only made, oops, 1100, not sure what that is, 1100 grams over 1346 times 100. So your percent yield is 81.72%. 
not a bad yield. You guys will be doing the lab of percent yield. Of course, the closer you get to 100, the better. Typically, you see gray, you will see yields less than 100. Not possible to make um, products. Sometimes you, in the, our labs, high school labs, you do get percent yield um, greater than 100s. And we have some questions I want you thinking about that. Most of the time, it's because the sub, whatever you are collecting is still wet, and so you have water weight in addition to the actual weight. Okay, let's just do a couple more. So again, read the question. What is the percent yield? Okay, percent yield is when you think, okay, I need a couple more information. So I know in my mind, what do I need? If it's asking for percent yield, I'm going to have to have an actual over your theoretical and times 100 just puts, in, puts it into a percentage. So producing, whenever you see this word producing right here, 200 grams, what does this mean? This is your actual. Tuck it away. I don't need it right now. So what is the percent yield when I have this much copper and I'm looking for silver? So I want grams of silver. Since it gave me the actual yield of silver, I'm going to have to calculate the theoretical yield of silver. What do I have? Well, in this question, it have 65 grams of copper. So now in my balanced equation, unbalanced, which I need to balance, I go back and balance it. So how am I going to figure out this? Well, if I have 65 grams of copper, what do I have to do? Mole it. So one mole of copper, 63.55 grams of copper, change it to moles. Then what do you have to do? Convert your moles of copper to moles of silver, balanced equation, two moles of silver for every one mole of copper. And then final step, moles, but this is given to me in grams. So I'm going to have to convert it from my moles to my grams. So in theory, I should have made 221 grams of silver. So how well did we do our experiment? Well, read back up here. Now I need this number. 201 grams is what I collected. I should have had 220, whoops, again, 221 grams times 100. So three significant figures, 91% yield. Not a bad yield. I think most of you would probably take a 91% yield in the lab. Okay, sometimes we're going to throw a twist because we like to throw a twist. We're that kind of teachers we are. Make you think a little bit more. So let's kind of read this and see what the twist is. So excess copper sulfate reacts with, okay, so right here, this is an amount. This is what I'm given of aluminum to yield copper and aluminum sulfate. So what mass of copper is produced if the percent yield of copper is 80%? So look at what I kind of know here. Look at my theoretical, or excuse me, my formula. Actual over theoretical. So they gave me this time my yield. And again, times 100. So I know that. Well, it's asking for what? How much did I actually produce? It's asking for this theoretical, excuse me, my actual. So theoretical, I'm going to have to calculate first. I can do that in stoichiometry. Remember, I can do this from stoichiometry. So what am I looking for? I want to know grams of copper. What did it give me to help me solve this problem? Well, it's saying I start with 2.7 grams of aluminum. And then I can plug it into my formula. So go through. We need to balance. What do I need? Three sulfates, three copper sulfates, three coppers, then two aluminums. So I'm going to start grams of aluminum. Three steps. Grams of aluminum to moles, to moles of copper, to grams of copper. So look at this big formula. Don't let it scare you because you didn't even need the molar mass of it. 
So I know for every one mole of sulfur, or excuse me, aluminum, it's 26.98 grams. And then what else do I know? Well, I will get three moles of copper for every two moles of aluminum I react. So that would convert it to moles of copper. So the final step, well, every one mole of copper I know is 63.55 grams. So again, pick up your calculator, 2.7 divided by 26.98, that's about a tenth, times 3 divided by 2 times 63.55. So, in theory, I should get 9.54 grams of copper. So this is your theoretical. Take your theoretical, plug it back into your formula. So I'm just going to rewrite it kind of down here. Well, we already know that. What do I know? I know that my yield is 80%. And I don't know my actual. I do now know my theoretical times 100. Okay, now do the algebra. Divide both sides by 100. So what do we have? 0.8 now equals x over your 9.54. And then cross multiply. So you end up x is 0.8 times 9.54. So in other words, you need 80% of your yield because you only have an 80% yield. So you would get 7.63 grams is what you would expect to produce in the lab. Just different application, same formula, plug it into your formula, then rearrange to solve it. Okay, I want you to work on these. So if you notice, a couple things. Density of water, remember, is 1. I cannot write ones today. One gram per milliliter. So therefore, if I have 50 milliliters, I have 50 grams. Need to balance both of these equations. And then you're looking what's in common. So if I figure out how much hydrogen I make, take 90% of that, then turn it in and just do the stoichiometry for that to figure out how much hydrochloric acid. Really, this is just my way of doing two um, limiting reactant problems. So this is where we're going to start tomorrow and we're going to look that you've at least tried them and get started on them and again that's how you guys improve is you're actually doing them.